A few days ago, I reviewed the film Am I Racist? A film featuring Matt Walsh absolutely destroying and dissecting DEI grifters, anti-white folks, things of that ilk. My review received mixed results. Some people thought I went in very unbiased and very fair. Others said I had a chip on my shoulder and I was going to give this a bad review no matter what. And a few went as far as to say I was paid to give this thing a negative review. And if you're one of those folks tuning into this video, I'll talk slower. Uh, but this is the internet after all, where we have to double dip if anything has any sort of traction. So here we are with a spoiler video. I'm going to go into detail as to what worked and what didn't. And there's not going to be any preamble after this. Let's begin. I'd first like to start with about five minutes of preamble. I'm joking, I'm joking. Just subscribe to the channel if you like what I'm doing here, if you wanna hear about movie reviews, commentary, things of that nature. That's what I do, movie reviews. All right, this film, Am I Racist, isn't so much Matt Walsh trying to determine if he is or isn't. It's more so pointing out the fact that there's a lot of grifting going on and he's pretty much targeting the left exclusively on this. You see in America, there's Republicans and there's Democrats. Each one of them brings their own flavors to the table. The Democrats are always going off about how racism is everywhere, around every corner, the cops are evil, things like that. The, that that's the playbook. And on the right, it's illegal immigrants are coming in and they're killing our women and you know doing unspeakable acts to the children, taking every job on the planet. Both sides are going to fear monger and they're going to capitalize on those fears. And then of course there's going to be different pros and cons for each party depending on where you sit. For this though, we're talking about exclusively DEI hires, anti-racism movements, wokeism, things that Matt Walsh really wants to tackle. And to tackle them, he's going to go undercover to these different meetings, these different paid services that people are putting on, and he's going to pretend that he's aloof, that he's just there to learn. And oftentimes, he lets these folks kind of hang themselves by their own words. In between the quasi-documentary, quasi-mockumentary sections, there's also going to be these small skits that he does. Now, in these portions, I really didn't find them very funny. The film opens with him at a small town cafe. A uh, black woman takes his order and asks how he would like his coffee. This poses the first question to hit him. Oh no, he doesn't want to say he wants it dark because that could come off as racist. Right away for me, I'm thinking, who, who, the, who the fuck thinks like that? Does Matt Walsh think like that? I've never once thought that. But then it's, oh, this is how he perceives the far left folks to think. Like, oh, I don't want to offend her by saying something wrong. Uh, otherwise I'll get canceled or whatever. It's kind of like a somewhat silly observation, but it's not done in the most like witty or clever way. It's very, dr Matt is very dry in this whole movie. And that I guess is a big problem I have with it. He's not playing a character so much as he's just kind of himself. So this humor is exclusive to the conversations he gets in and the dumb things that people say. And believe me, they say plenty of stupid things. I found myself chuckling here and there but there is a really slow pace to it. And that was a problem I had. Another issue I had with the movie, and this got thrown back in my face, discrediting me for some reason, was I said it was very polished. Oh, the movie looks too good. What kind of a stupid criticism is that? The point I'm getting at is he's presenting this as like a man on the streets, kind of guerrilla style thing where he's going up to real people. Ask, and there is a point where he is on the streets talking to real people, but everything has a very staged look to it. There is a disconnect when he does these skit sequences and then he does these, you know, guerrilla man on the street scenes. They look the same. There's no differentiating the two. It would bring you into the film more. It would make it more realistic if it was a little shittier. <laughs> it's like, I know it sounds like a silly criticism, but really that's how it's done. When either Blair Witch or Cloverfield came out, I think it was Cloverfield, the director said to the dude running the camera, you gotta actually shake it up a bit more because how you're doing it right now is far too professional. It's far too steady for audiences. It's not gonna be as believable. That's what I'm getting at when I say, it's really well produced. It feels manufactured. It feels disingenuous. There's a scene later. This is the perfect example where Matt Walsh goes to a small town bar. It's got Confederate flags on the walls. There's apparently like three people in it, which I guess makes sense. It's like the middle of the day. And he talks to a few folks. 
the camera is really framed up on an old guy who's chugging beers. There's a secondary camera shot. It goes back to Matt Walsh. Nice soft focus on him. I'm sitting here thinking like, really? You guys walked in here. You lit the place up. You asked a couple people if they could get interviewed. And then you had these like beautifully stationed shots. It just loses any sort of naturalness that they were going for. I want it executed a little bit better. Also, as far as the bias thing goes, which is an absolute thing here, Matt Walsh went to one bar and interviewed a couple people and suddenly, oh look, like all these guys at dive bars are really well-adjusted individuals. They just want peace and harmony, black and white to come together like a cookie in Seinfeld. I'm sorry, but that's an incredibly small view. I'm currently living in South Carolina. I could take my camera down to a bunch of different bars over here and the stuff that's gonna come out with the people's mouths there, gonna be a tad different than the wise sage biker dude that's got nothing but great things to say about his fellow black man. The film is very one note as far as the humor goes as well. It's Walsh going to a place, he sits into the conversation, he asks a couple basic questions to kind of like derail people or to just show how ridiculous their seminars are, which is fair, it's funny. But then we just do this again and again and again. There's no like other creative angle or lens to watch this through. It's just wash, rinse, repeat. And it's a slow affair. Like, okay, he asks a basic question. The woman or whoever doesn't know how to respond in any sort of a sane way. So you kind of laugh at how stupid it is. But then there's like a pause, an awkward silence, and then we might get one or two follow-up laughs, followed by a bunch of like filler shit until we get to the next section of the movie where he's once again in another room doing the same shtick to someone else. I was getting tired of it at an hour 45. Let's talk about some of the funny parts of the movie. I, I talked about this in my other review, but to like dig further into it, one of my favorite interactions is when Matt Walsh is talking to some woman about uh, how everybody's born racist, every white person is natural, like by default racist, <laughs> which is kind of like in the Bible, how everybody's born with sin. I'm not like huge on either of those concepts. Uh, so I'm with Walsh on this. Like, are you out of your mind, woman? Everybody's racist by default. That's the stupidest shit I've ever heard. And he goes on to talk about how his daughter like really likes Moana and wants to dress up as her for Halloween, but it's challenging because, you know, it's like cultural appropriation or something. He doesn't want her to put like makeup on and get Moana face. And the woman agrees and says, yeah, that you cannot do that at all. That's terrible. Um, another time he's talking about how her favorite princess is a woman of color, which is good. That's a good first step. Another scene that was pretty fun, but again, it goes on far too long and it takes a while to get a laugh is when he sets up his own anti-racism seminar and he's got a few stragglers coming in and he's, he has like on the board different types of people that could be racist. And he's, he's asking people in the room, which person in here they think is the most racist. Just some uncomfortable questions. And as things get more extreme, people start to get up and leave to the point where there's only like three people left in the room. And he tells people to whip themselves over their whiteness. Now, obviously we don't want people flogging themselves. But on the other hand, I kind of wanted to see that. That would have been hilarious to go that extra step <laughs> where people are like ah ah get the whiteness out of me ah but this is pg-13 another head scratcher why is this pg-13 this is a really sensitive topic this is a touchy one i feel like a rated r is almost mandatory for this and that way you can really drill into these conversations and get some of the wild extreme stuff out there i think the worst scene in the film which could have been edited far tighter and it probably could have been a lot funnier is when he goes undercover to one of these women's only dinners. Uh, you have the two women of color and they're just going off about how like white people suck and America should burn to the ground. And you have all these privileged women in the room like here, here, I agree, drinking their Chardonnay or whatever. The way Walsh is able to get in on this is he pretends to be one of the workers. He's cleaning up dishes. He's banging plates around and stuff. He's dropping things. And then eventually he just starts interjecting. He sits down at one point. He joins the conversation. It's uncomfortable. And there is some laughs to be found for sure. 
But again, this is just a slow moving section and there's not really a ton of payoff in any of these. They're just kind of like, oh, gotcha. That was that was good. That was clever. Where are we going though? What, what's the punchline of these scenes? And it never hits. It just moves on to the next thing. Another scene where an R rating could have absolutely elevated the humor and taken this to a much more exciting place. When they go over the Jesse Smollett attack from 2019, I probably butchered his name. I don't, I don't, I honestly didn't follow that at all. I didn't care enough, but that was five or six years ago. Also a little odd to focus on that event and make it kind of like a spectacle. Anyway, he does a recreation where the story keeps changing. So when Matt Walsh's version is playing out and he gets a sub from Subway, he's getting attacked. Then suddenly he's tied up, but then not. It wasn't over the top enough. He should have gone extreme with it. Like they're kicking the living shit out of him. He's like spitting up blood. You need to elevate the humor. That's where I look at something like South Park who does parody far better than this did. One of my favorite South Park episodes where they take things to such an absurd level is where the kindergarten teacher is sleeping with one of her students. If this was a male teacher sleeping with a girl, he would be given the chair or executed publicly overnight. But because we have double standards in this country, all the guys that hear about this just go, nice. It's hilarious and it drives the point home in a funny way. This was just surface level observational humor and not done in a very clever way. Once in a while, he throws a witty little jab at them, but it's far and few in between. Another point of criticism I had in the creative department is Matt Walsh really doesn't change his appearance at all. Some have informed me that that was part of the joke, that he really didn't have to do much of anything and people wouldn't recognize him because they're, all, they're in their own echo chambers at the end of the day. Uh, and, and actually a group did recognize him when he was at one of the meetings. It didn't really lead to anything humorous though, which sucks. But that wasn't my point. My point was it would be really funny if he did dress up in really extreme ways. Like if you walked into one of these sessions with like the most ridiculous get up possible, trying to cause people to look at him, but then see that they're trying their hardest not to pay attention because they're not judgmental and you know, like everybody's included sort of a thing. That would have been hilarious. Like maybe he goes to one of these events dressed as a pirate, but never says anything about being a pirate. That That's funny to me. I think that would have been hilarious. Like he's just straight faced and he's got a fucking fake parrot on his shoulder and he's talking about how he wants to do better. That way you're really showcasing how little these grifters care and they're just trying to get money. All right, hopefully I went into a bit more detail and it was more concise for some of you and you can understand where I'm coming from at the end of the day. This isn't a terrible movie. I said this in my last review. It just doesn't really do anything for me that I haven't seen before. The topic is, is a fair one to address for sure. And so I don't knock that. I do think the scope of it was incredibly narrow though. It would have been nice if you broadened it out a bit, but hopefully you appreciated my honest thoughts. I would appreciate it if you subscribed to the channel, liked the video, shared it around if you want, and hopefully I catch you next time.